to the scene, gang face on. Huh? White cops go lay some. Huh? Looking for a bad bitch to take on. Huh? Better Miller won't take long. Other niggas hit you with the same line. Bet that shit sound like the same song. I ain't come through just to say all. Know the sign coming with a cape on. Blowing up the spot like pay block. You can lose your life before you take mine. Pistol in the car. And we're back. What's going on, man? Dude, you know what? Once again, another week, another podcast. I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm feeling good. I don't know why I'm jittery today. Well, we, we just had a good, great talk, and I think we are feeling ourselves. Well, I I know I'm feeling myself because yeah. I'm really I'm really comfortable sitting here now. Yeah. It's been what eight eight times I sat down in front. Yeah, of you and we just and we just talked our shit. You know what I'm saying? And today, well, we have a lot to talk about. Hell yeah! Because there's been a lot going on, and I think we we put this topic off. For this week, which was our finance, or you know, our financing. financial talks, yeah. yeah. So, honestly, for me, finances is a huge, huge part of my life. It's a huge part of all of our lives. Money is not everything, but it's up there with air, as my grandmother would say. Um, there's, <laughs> yeah, she a cold piece, man. She don't play, grandma don't oh, play. Man. But she ain't the truth. But let's be honest here. There's not much we can do without money um or whether it's somebody else's money being credit or a loan or whatever you just need money to function mm-hmm. i mean churches need money uh charities need money yeah, hospitals so need money yeah and that's actually the first thing i really want to touch on and uh dispel money having money does not make you a bad person what so you that- do with the money determine you know what you are who what, you are, what type of person, person you are. are yeah because people money isn't good or bad because money can fund a war or money can feed a whole country or find diseases fix find cures to diseases or it's out there, send man. in soldiers you know it, yeah. there's money you know money is it <laughs> at this point our idea of money and how we feel about money and what money does for us as in currency makes the world go round yep um, you know, at some point people would say salt had more value than gold because salt cured, you know, this is me jumping back in time. You use salt to, uh, to cure the meat. Mm-hmm. And so there was a time in, in history where salt had more value than gold, especially when empires were trying to take over. Yeah. Well, when you think about <laughs> like, it, so, but you know, gold, is, like if you break down just that simple thing, gold is entertainment. Oh yeah. It looks. Yeah. Because. What life? What life does gold like? How does that? Can you live without gold? I would say gold yes. Gold ain't no. It's it's just it looks pretty. Yeah. Now yeah, yes, yeah. it does have some fun. It does have function. You know, it's a conductor or whatnot. Blah yeah, blah blah but, blah blah blah. But I get what you're saying. Uh-huh. It is a looks, just like how a lot of people have the whole misunderstanding of diamonds. The whole diamond craze, and um, I'm not going to get into too, many, uh, too much detail about it. You can look it up for yourself, but diamond is a work tool, and diamond is in abundance. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a, uh, there's a a park in, I want to say, Arkansas. I want to say it's called Diamond Crater Valley or Diamond Crater Lake, which I want to take a vacation there and go camping. You can actually go and mine for diamonds. Really? Yeah, like a lady found a carrot-sized diamond. She just stuck her hand in the dirt sitting by a tree and grabbed a diamond. And these are actual real diamonds. Yeah. Diamonds are in abundance. It's actually more of a work gym than mm-hmm. anything else. But somebody capitalized on the idea such just as uh, this is actually a real funny thing. I want people to go out and really look into who invented the word halitosis. Now, <laughs> when when Lister That's and this a is funny word. Yeah. yeah. Halitosis, you know, hot breath. Yeah. But um, I want to give a I didn't I'm not taking credit for this research. I forgot who the video the people were, but they did a whole video on it. Listerine, when they first came out, the mouthwash company, they had a hard time selling because nobody knew their breath stunk. Yeah. So what they Damn, do? People wasn't telling people they. Breath well, stink. nobody. Well, what stink? You know it. What is breath stink? What? It, yeah. Now we know yeah. because we've had decades of knowing what it's defined as. Yeah. So what Listerine did was patent a word and pumped out ads behind halitosis. Really. So it had people scared. Like, do you have halitosis? 
<laughs> yeah, dude, in that simple, boom, took off. But that's beside the point, and I'm jumping kind of off topic, and I'm gonna wrap it back. So finances, it once again, money makes the world go round. So for me, I, there was a point, and I'm st- still currently at the same exact job. Um, cur- I was at a point where I was literally living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was roughing it. I'm talking, I get to the end of my pay period, and I'm looking at my wife like, hey, so you know that bill I got to pay? <laughs> Can you transfer me a little bit? You know, I, now, let, let for me, some reason, I'm short. Let me ask you a question. Do you get paid bi-weekly or weekly? Um, I get paid weekly. Okay, so every week. Every week. All right. Continue. I'm sorry. I okay. Perspective. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm sitting there and I'm blowing through money fast like I'm BMF. Like <laughs> I'm out here <laughs> powerballing, you know. And and it's so funny. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was getting paid every week because uh-huh. it was like, oh, all I got to do is just breathe till next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I can kick it. No, yeah, go nowhere. Can, let me let me just breathe until next Friday. Yeah. And let me go ahead and struggle. And I'm kind of opening up my life to you guys, mm-hmm. but. Um, but seriously, I had to, I, I was roughing it Yeah. and I, um, at work, I took some clients to, a um, to actually a Dave Ramsey conference called the smart conference. Ooh. Um, and so you got to meet Dave Ramsey new, no, oh. uh, but I was in the crowd. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was at a big auditorium. <laughs> um, now I learned about zero balance budgeting mm-hmm. and just the importance of budgeting and saving for the future and all these good things. Now, it completely changed my life because with the same amount of income, I literally set a budget for myself and my type of the budgeting that I set is through Dave Ramsey zero zero but uh, zero dollar budgeting. Set, see, it's funny you bring up Dave Ramsey because I, I like Dave Ramsey. Oh, yeah. I like his content. I think that his his step program, the seven steps, the seven step program, S- seven baby steps is yeah. is good and bad at the same time. True. The reason why I say that and well, well before I cut you off, are you finished with your point or no, no, no. Yeah, so go ahead. So, finish what you said. So basically, um, I took on I took on a lot of the the main portions of Dave Ramsey's teachings. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, for me, I'm not. Uh, I like to take bits and pieces that I like from everywhere. Yeah. But it's hard to argue with what works. Of course. He has results on top of results on top of results for people who have a lot of large income to very little income. Yeah. And it works. It's hard to argue with with what it's hard to argue with what works. So um, so I took it on for a bit and I, I took it on to a T. And I found myself with more money. Hmm. <laughs> now <laughs> I, I, I know I get kind of quiet Because I really don't know how to explain it Yeah, I found myself with more money Wow I, shit like you said it, it works There's it, no need it to works. explain it Yeah, yeah works. it, it like, works I literally wrote down where my money was going to go mm-hmm. Set I, And the number one tip That I, I've i learned From the Dave Ramsey um, Budgeting Just from budgeting in general Any type of budgeting Not even just Dave Ramsey you have to be honest with yourself. Yep. You have to be 100% honest with yourself. If you know you, like in my case, I have a bad habit of going out to restaurants. I grew up in restaurants. Me, I mean. Hey, that's pretty much half a society nowadays. Yeah, I mean, but no, it was bad for me. Like, well, it was like one of those TV shows. Like, yeah, we but, walked in. Everybody said hi to you. Bro, you sat down. The waiter knew exactly bro, what you wanted. I know. <laughs> Imagine going to Santana's and they all know us. Oh, yeah. Come on. They, yeah. We grew up like that. Yeah. But the thing with us now, now as now that we're young and we're two parent working households. Yeah. What's I, I you know, I, I can't blame my wife for not cooking most of the time. She works yeah. 40 hours. A, yeah. 40 hours a week, just like I do. Yeah. Just like she can't blame me for not taking the trash out or yeah. doing some stuff at yeah. home that I'm supposed to do. The dynamics are way different. Exactly. So. You know, when I when I hear that, like I say, yo, I understand it, but one you got to know your limit. You yes. got to know what your limit is. And if you don't know your limit, you need to set one. So you're 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 exactly right when you say you got to be honest with yourself. Yep. Now, what what I was getting ready to say with with Dave Ramsey um was that I love Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Uh some of his stuff make total sense to me. The problem though with uh with Dave Ramsey and, and some of his content, I feel like it doesn't appeal to 
me all of the time because okay. for one, I'm a husband. Mm-hmm. For two, I'm a father as well. Mm-hmm. And for three, I have a household to take care of. So when you when you follow his thing uh, by the book, I get what you're saying. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's for me. It was it's crazy because it's like damn. Well, my daughter want to go to the movies. Sheesh, I can't go to the movies. Like my daughter, I want I want to surprise my wife and do this. So it's kind of hard to to abide by it to the T. And and all right. No, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Okay. And to make to better clarify the point uh, Travis is making. Um, Dave Ramsey, when you get on board, I, I really recommend it for people who think they're drowning in debt. If you think you're drowning in debt, Dave Ramsey's plan, you follow it to a T, I promise your life will get a lot simpler. Now, the, the one downside to it is, and this is where you have to make the choice for yourself is how fast do you want to get out of debt? Yep. Because it can get extreme in terms of. No more going out to eat. Cut up your credit cards. Um, all I mean, he goes in hmm. because the whole point is to get out of debt as quickly as wow. humanly possible. So you know, all right. So okay. So let's let's stick with that now. Okay. With me and my and my finance, I know you kind of gave brief like with, with yeah. yourself personally. Now me personally, I get paid every weekly as well, mm-hmm. right? So, growing up, I was never taught, like, credit. I wasn't uh, taught none of that stuff that I needed to know. So, I didn't have established credit until 2012, 13. No, it was literally, it was like the year before I got married, 2012. Uh, I got you. Okay. So, I got established credit for one year, right, before I got married. Now... I'm going out and I'm I'm trying to get a ring and things like that. Uh, yeah. And it's hard because you ain't got no credit. Yeah. And I always said to myself, hey, I would rather have, and this is as I'm starting to learn about it. I made up in my mind I would rather have no credit than have bad credit. So True. I said, I'ma just be cool. They both bad, right? but I'm but I ain't in the negative. I kind of yeah. see it as zero zero. Yeah, yeah. So I started establishing my credit, get my credit up, get my credit up, doing things for my credit. And uh, it, it started to slowly go up. Now, um, with myself, as I started getting older, as me and my wife started to grow, we started to, you know, we were living in an apartment. Um, when I ended up, when we ended up moving to our first home, mm-hmm. I changed my whole financial situation, right? So what I what I do for myself Right. Being honest with myself, I'm like, yo, you spend too much money outside. Like you go mm. you buy too much food outside. You're you're buying necessary stuff. When I go to Walmart and I I need a sweater. Knowing damn well I don't need a sweater. Yeah. You know, I, I said that to myself. So what I started doing, I started giving myself an allowance. Okay. So with myself, um, I got a and and this is another thing I do. I use a credit card as my allowance. So I got I give myself a six hundred dollar limit a month, right? That takes care of my gas for work, and that takes care of everything that I may or may not need for the for the month. Mm-hmm. So I don't spend cash. If you don't accept credit card, I'm not. Buy, there's no need for me to buy. Yeah. So I give myself a limit. I use that limit at the end of the month. And the reason why $600 is my limit is that's how much money I can afford to spend to pay off 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 instantly. So at the end of the month, it's taken care of. And it's not a big deal. Exactly. So, and another reason why I use credit card is because if something happens. You want to have cash on hand. I'm going to have cash. Yeah, and I'm not in a rush to pay this this six hundred. Yeah. I can yeah. pay the twenty five dollars. Yeah, you can I... pay the monthly limit. Yeah, exactly. And and let me and let me not to cut you off. No, just go ahead, to, just to give a little background, you have to do that. You have to have serious serious um, self control. Um, you have to be very responsible and have a lot of self control. That's why any any financial advisor worth their salt will, would really not recommend that for the everyday person mm-hmm. for the simple fact that everybody doesn't have that type of control. Yeah. 
Now, and just to throw in there too, it don't always work out that way. No, no, you yeah, know? it's it, real it, life. It We're living real life. That straight, narrow, straight and narrow. Yeah, I get a little crooked sometimes in there. Yeah. And, hey, oh, Call of Duty coming out. Oh, yeah, hey, I found this. Yeah, but the re- there's the six hundred dollars for me is the low end. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the low end. I could take care of that, and I, I that makes sense to me because. I can then go about my saving. So my saving routine is pretty straightforward. I have a 401k with my job, Mm -hmm. right? Upon that, what I like to do is take out 10% after I get my check, throw it into a savings account. There you go. You see what I'm saying? So that's 10%. It may not look like much, but it's a lot. Hey, and you know what? That's I'm speaking on that. Um, I'm gonna piggyback real quick, and I'm gonna let you get back to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I highly recommend everyone go and pick up uh, the richest man in Babylon. Um, it's a it's an easy read, and um, it has it has some biblical references. Um, but for the most part, it it teaches you a lot about how one of the poorest people became the richest man in Babylon. And that's actually a big thing of 10% of all you earn is yours to keep. Um, that is a real big saying. And that's something that constantly revolves throughout the book and paying yourself first. I think that's probably where I got the 10% from, mm-hmm. you know, you know, when you break down 10% of a paycheck, mm-hmm. you know, well, 10% of a hundred dollars is $10, 10 bucks. And you know, like, some people may look at that like that ain't really nothing. You ain't that's gonna take you forever to get somewhere. No, it's five hundred and twenty yeah. a year. Hey, like you know what I'm saying? I'm not bugging because once I get one, like I'm not worried about that little bit of money. You know what I'm saying? It can it can instantly keep going there, and I don't have to look at it. Now, with me saving that ten percent, mm-hmm. that, that that money is for anything that may happen. Yep. If nothing happened, I don't have to touch it. Yep. You know so. Though that's my little way that I like to do it. I do it that way because it kind of it centers me. Because mm. now, see, we're we're into we're getting into PC gaming. True. We just talked about PCs on our last episode, right? And what do we think about getting into it? Now, PCs ain't cheap. Anything worthwhile? You know what I'm saying? If you want something that can run be, for a few years, you are gonna have to spend some money. Yeah. So now, I can. I can save. I can do stuff to save. And a, a big thing that helped me, and I want you to explain that, is the your your the way you took care of your debt because that's the way I did. Mm. I forget the, how you explain snowballing. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's a here's another pro tip, um, and this is actually through Dave Ramsey. Um, snowballing. So basically, you line up all your debt, um, and you line it up from the least to the greatest and you go through your budget and this is of course you do this after you do your zero budgeting because then you can figure out what what extra money you have because i promise you no matter how much you think you're struggling you have extra money and it's going somewhere you're bleeding money somewhere you're hemorrhaging money somewhere and until you do a zero budget and find out exactly where your money is going you will not know but i promise you when you think you ain't got no money you do somewhere it may not be a large amount but you have it so going back to the snowballing so you line up all your debt from the least um and you go by based on amounts so you go from your least amount to your greatest and you pay it off in bulk so let's say you have um you have 25 dollars 50 dollars and 100 dollars and your minimum payment on all of them is five bucks we'll try to keep it simple so once you pay off your $25 one you then instead of all of a sudden saving that extra five dollars that you have because you no longer have to pay towards that $25 you roll it over to your $50 one and now instead of paying five dollars on your 50 you pay ten dollars a month on your 50 and so on and so forth and you keep snowballing it so the amount of money you're putting towards your debt is getting bigger like a snowball rolling down a hill exactly that's yeah, the point that's that, snowball debt that, snowballing man, and in short remember when we first talked about it my debt was nothing compared to what i thought with ev- what other people's was oh yeah you know, my you, debt was pretty low yeah and uh you know big part of that is 
because like I didn't go to school and, mm-hmm. and things like that. I didn't have loans like that when I mm-hmm. started my journey in being a husband. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't really have that much. But just doing that snow that snow that snowball of thing, I cleared up such stuff way Fast. faster than I thought I could. Yeah, because it was just it was literally credit cards and it was like Firestone card mm-hmm. and then like my rings and stuff like that. Literally was like months because I'm like, hey, it's going because I'm not worried about the extra money that I just paid off such and such with because mm-hmm. it's life still goes on down what I'm been what I've been using. Yes. Uh, you know, before I before I paid off. So I got a credit card, pay this credit card off, go to the next credit card. That first credit card, I ain't worried about it. Yep. Because I'm still doing the same thing I've been doing when yep. I was paying it. So that way was I, I I love that way, and I tell as much people as possible about that. They should they should actually look into doing that because you'll clear your debt up so fast. It 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 melts it. And then another thing too that you should think about, and I'm guilty of it, just like anybody else would probably be. Just because you clear up your debt, don't mean yes, you have to get back into debt. You have the debt. to get more. <laughs> that is recidivism. I believe I said it right. That you know, repeating. Yeah. That's the falling back into it. That's the 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 big part, and that's where the whole self control thing comes into play. You, it's a mindset. Just like how people talk about diets and talk about exercise, which I actually need to get on board with. <laughs> you um, <do> both, <laughs> but it's a mindset. It's a lifestyle change. It's not a momentary thing. You really, after you truly look at your finances, you really sit down and look at them. You'll, one, figure out where you're blowing your money. Me, I I mean, it was anything from hookah bar, restaurants, and uh, fast food. That, and if you think about that, there's nothing to show for any of those things. Nope. You get, except bad health. (laughs) (laughs) You get nothing from it, from it. So... If you really, really start buckling down and looking at your money, breaking it down. Okay, I have X amount coming in, X amount going out towards this. Wait a second. Why do I have $400 a month going out towards fast food? What? Like, but you'll think you're broke. No, you're not broke. You just need to go grocery shopping. Because what's funny is you take that same you cut the, you take that $400 cut it in half $200 can probably feed who you and whoever else yeah. for a good amount um for a good amount of time mm-hmm. i promise you to cut the restaurant out i've seen families spend $40 at mcdonald's i didn't think that type of stuff was possible yeah that's yeah, kind of that's uh, weird to me and outrageous like okay stop it's, buying your kids numbered men- meals it's like a yukon like it's always yukon right <laughs> no but why is a child under any age to pay bills ordering a Big Mac meal. <laughs> well, see, we didn't grow up that way. <laughs> look, I gr- look, man, I, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, you I may, you. Dude, I may go out to eat a lot. I may eat a lot of fast food or more than the average bear, but I'm going to tell you this. I can count on one hand in my entire life how many times I've ordered a numbered menu mm-hmm. item. Everything is dollar menu. Everything is budget menu. Everything is single item. Uh, I don't I, the new specialty burger. I've no. I'm not that guy. Uh, I, as big as I am, I can promise you, I've never had any of the fancy burgers. I don't even like going to Carl's Jr. because the menu looked too complicated. Because I can't tell which <laughs> one's the cheap burger. Can I just get a plain cheeseburger, please? No. Like, so you want you want the- a double Western Big Star? <laughs> No, I just. But so you want a big star with no cheese? Nah, nah. I, no offense to Carl's Jr. because they make amazing milkshakes. But my my point is, but we've always you, been like that, though. True, but those are habits that were created by our families. Yeah, and that's something you also that's that's also the big point. Of all it is is your family. So we always want to make things better for the next the people below us. Mm-hmm. We want to give them the bigger start than we had. Because me, I had a great start in life. I'm not even going to sit here and try to give you some boohoo story. Had an amazing start in life. So now, I want to make sure that my my kids' um, start is a thousand times bigger than mine was. Yeah. And then that's how you get generational wealth. Hey, this is the bare minimum. Bare minimum in my, in my, my house was, growing up, was college. 
bare minimum, not high school, not GED. It was college degree. Yeah. That was the bare minimum. That's amazing. No, but but that's, this is that's, but this is the mindset. Yeah. This is the mindset. That was bare minimum. So yeah, and I'll talk one day about it. I got my issues with college. I got my degree, so I'm not gonna sit here and act like I don't got it. Oh, you know, I but, got my issue with it. Yeah, but I have I have big issues with the school system. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point today. So, but now my 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 kids, my two daughters, their benchmark is gonna be higher than mine was. And for me, when I think higher than uh, higher than education, I think job creation. I want them to be in a position where they can create jobs for people. They can hire. They can create work for people. Um, entrepreneurship. Uh, on top of, yeah, okay, if they can, they want a degree, they can get a degree. But that's beside the point. So wrapping it back up to, to finances, we have to financially educate our children and our first ourselves. Then we have to educate our children. So with us, even though my daughter's only one, we when we do sit down and do a budget at the beginning of the month because yes we do a monthly budget we sit down and we do it in front of her she's mm. going to grow up knowing and seeing us budget time budgeting yeah she's going to see us working through numbers wow she's going to see us crunching she's going to see us and then not using the term we can't afford it using the term how can we afford it all right mindset differences so let me let me ask you a question Cause you said monthly budgeting. Uh huh. Now, what what does that consist of? If you don't mind me asking, that's easy. Okay. When, when you say that, like for I I think of me. Okay. Like I have a financial chart. Okay. Now, right. So what it is, what I like to do with my with my all my bills, and I just think of bills, right? Anything extra, and that's and when I say extra, I mean like the car needs tires or things like that. Um, I'm prepared for that already. Through my savings. Now, um, anything outside of that realm, I'm gonna have, we're going to have to bust out the credit card okay, to get that taken care of. Now, when you say financial budgeting every month, what, what is that kind okay. of stuff for you? And, and for one, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm some big time financial guru. So let me let me clarify that. Well, and you're I a financial do... guru in your home. Yeah. And this is, I'm asking you because okay. maybe somebody else is listening and thinking the same thing because... Like I said, I have a financial chart at home. Or actually, I didn't even, I forgot to say this point. So with me, I take the, every year, mm -hmm. I'll look back at like a constant bill. So like my light bill, my gas bill, those are constant for me. I'm going to always be paying those. Mm -hmm. Whatever was the highest month that I, the, the month that I paid the most for that bill, that's my number. So that's where you make sure to keep. Yeah. That's actually a really smart idea. So I do that because I was like, all right, now, and then. And then some of my bills never even touch that mark True. until a certain point in the year because I live in such the desert. Such as gas, such as heat, exactly. electricity. Got you. So now I'm, I, I sit and I say, okay, that's my number. That's what I need to hit. Uh, or it, it got to be around that point. As long as I make that point, I'm good. So every month, what do you do okay. for your budget? So now for me, we have, um, we have our constants. So we know... How much the mortgage is going to be? Okay, we know how much uh, we got a good average of the electric bill, the gas bill, so on and so forth for those. So, um, and then what? Where we truly thrive, and where we really made a big difference in our lives, because we didn't have a problem paying our bills. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the issue. The issue was okay. How much are we going to set aside for restaurants? Oh, uh, okay. So like, okay. All right. Okay, because cool. there was a point where, because it was just me and Kylie, and especially me. Working, uh, well, I want to say around the, not the mall time, yeah. I want to say, well, no, right when I started working at the company I work at now. So, there was a point where we were going out to eat at a restaurant twice a day, yeah. And I'm not a, I'm not a big item orderer, so it's not like I'm, my plate and my meal is going to cost $30 by myself, yeah. Together, it'll probably total out to around 20 mm -hmm. or I mean, around 40, but. You yeah. got to think about that. So, okay, we wake up in the morning. We didn't make breakfast. So that means we stopped in somewhere getting something quick to eat. Okay, it turned into $12 for both of us. Cool, mm -hmm. we got something to eat for breakfast. Lunchtime comes. All of a sudden, our coworkers want to go to the new Thai restaurant. So we hit up the Thai restaurant. That's $30 off top. Mm -hmm. Lord forbid I decide to get dessert. Okay, so 30 12 what is that, 42? 42. So we hit 42. Mm -hmm. 
and then dinner. We on the way home. She look at me. I'm hungry. Man, I'm hungry too. So where are we going to go? We might go get a cheeseburger from somewhere. Might go get a burrito. Whatever. But then that's going to turn into another, we'll just say, 20 bucks. Yeah. That's $62 one day. Damn. Now you turn that into five days a week. And then don't count us being fancy on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Do you get what I'm saying? So we were just, that was us freelancing. And then, I mean, I messed around. I want to say our highest month doing crunching numbers before we started budgeting turned into something along the lines of like $600 on just restaurants. Uh And I don't even think that was counting fast food. We kept those separate. But now with us budgeting, so since we know, hey, without us thinking, without even trying, we can put up big numbers going to restaurants. So let's not cut that down to nothing. Yeah. Because what, what most people uh, say, just like with weight loss, oh, no more carbs. I'm not eating this no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to do unless it's a life or death situation. Now, if a doctor come and tell you, hey, if you eat this, you're going to die, it would be easier to stop. Yeah. But if you're just doing it on your own and it's kind of just yeah. on your own willpower, it would be kind of hard. So it's best to wean off of it. Yes. So what we started doing was, so let's say we, we were able to crank 600 in a restaurant. Okay, let's cut it down to 300. Half. Half it. Yeah. And and do your best to stick to it. Because once again, you have to be honest with yourself. We had to be honest. Now, us not being honest would have been like, oh, we're not going to go to restaurants no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. That Come ain't, on now. That ain't, that ain't, that that ain't us. Mean. We both work 40 hours a week. Yeah. We both work. We both be out. We're both out of the house over yeah, twelve hours a day. Natural. Like it don't. It doesn't work with us. We're on the road. We were working in L.A. County at the time. So y'all was commuting too. We were no, commuting. It's no, it's not. It sense. made no sense. Yeah. Like we would have to do serious serious meal prepping, which is something we did for a while. Mm-hmm. But you get you get tired get of it. Tired. You get tired too, of yeah. it. So now going back to my point. So now not only did we do that to restaurants, we f- we averaged out how much gas we spent. And added on top of that, Mm -hmm. we found out um, we averaged in and then on top of gas, we added in real life issues. So we tacked on 100 on top of it Mm -hmm. because you never know when you got to buy a tire. You never know when you need an emergency change. Hell, a a hose breaks, whatever. We tacked on 100 to that. So we were completely honest with ourselves. And then we even set a grocery budget. Yeah, we said a toiletry budget. So Damn, we kept toiletries. We down. still do. We keep toiletries separate from um, groceries because what'll happen is you'll mess up your grocery budget. You'll be like, oh, we want to put because uh, we spend around. I want to say it's like fifty a week on groceries. There's only three of us. We don't eat that much mm-hmm. here anyway. So okay, we take. Um, what do we do? So you take that fifty. Um, that's for groceries. That's for the food. And then we'll say 25 for other things such as air fresheners, toilet paper, so on and so forth, uh, hand sanitizer, other things yeah. that go along with the house because you'll throw off your numbers. It'll be like, man, we spent $70 on groceries. No, you had to buy a new mop. You had to buy da 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 yeah. da 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 And that stuff's expensive. Hell yeah. Anything worthwhile. Um, so that's what we did. So we took every segment and then we even had a miscellaneous budget. For those random moments like, oh, so-and-so's having a birthday party. So-and-so's da-da-da-da-da. And you know what? I'm so happy we're talking about this because Christmas is coming up. Now, this is the time of year, the holiday, especially Black Friday being around the corner, like in a couple days. This is the time of year where people go broke. Huh. Yeah. And then they go broke because they're anticipating the tax return. Now, let let me tell you this. The best, the best thing we ever did was budget Christmas. The best thing we ever did financially for ourselves. And when I say that, for one, we get we get we get pretty hectic. If you got kids, we ain't buying you gifts. We buying your kids gifts. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's oh, one. Oh. That's 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 step one. Yeah. That's just how I get out. If you got kids, I'm buying stuff for your kids. I'm not buying nothing for you. You're a grown no ass man. Or, or gr- you adult. know what, you know what I started trying to do? If I can do it. If I can buy the household again, ah, household. There I'll you do go. That. Those are good. See, that's a. Sm- these are smart budgeting yeah. tips. But let me tell you. So what we did was, we took it because we got a bunch of little nieces and nephews and cousins. Each kid was twenty dollars. Mm, okay. So with twenty dollars, you can get what a hundred bucks. You can hit five kids. Oh, probably even a little bit more if you can. If you, if, if you do it right. If you do it right. So five kids, you know, five twenty hundred. Okay. 
So now, and then um, we set a budget aside for the for the dads, for the grandparents, and then we set aside a, a, a amount for the moms, mm-hmm. and we stuck to it. Yeah, we knew how much we were going to spend on Christmas before Christmas, before Black Friday got here. <laughs> we knew. So and then it actually made it fun because you get tricky with shopping. It's like, hey, I only got twenty bucks for this kid, so it's Black Friday. Holy crap! Santa can pick up three of these and a pair of socks and a T-shirt, and it's still under the twenty. You got Boom. all of that. Got a big now this kid got a big Christmas all because you didn't go out and buy the one twenty dollar toy. Yeah, you didn't go out and you know you took the time, and it actually makes it a little more special too. Um, Cause it takes thought. It takes thought. That. It takes thought. And you yeah, know, like I hate one thing I try not to do, especially for my nieces and nephews, because I already know where they're where they come from. Mm-hmm. I try to avoid clothes. Yeah. And I try to avoid gift cards. Yeah. You know, like so it makes sense to go out and look for something that they may. Yeah, like, like you know they're gonna love. Yeah. And a and a pro tip for you guys when it comes to Black Friday shopping, go to your local Disney store on Black Friday. Even if it's the next day, that whole weekend, actually, go because they have dope sales. You can get big, you can get uh, medium sized plush dolls and toys for like 10 bucks. Yeah, didn't so everybody. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Last Christmas, last couple Christmas, everybody got Minnie, Mickey Mouse and Princess, <laughs> so whatever. Man, and my all, baby girl dude, that I'm Mouse. telling you, everybody got it. Hey, you look up, like I you look up, like damn Santa Claus I delivering this gifts. morning and, and she kissed me goodbye. I go in her room, all her Minnie Mouses is in the bed, tucked underneath the sheet. <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. Look, it, it just, it, it don't, kids are, in my opinion, easy. Mm-hmm. It's it's the parents and it's us as adults who make it complicated. Yeah. Kid, they just want something to open. That's really, let's be honest. Because what's going to happen is you, for the most part, unless that toy is truly special to them, you're going to find it tucked away somewhere. Yeah. It's going to get lost in time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be something you get mad at them about. I just spent $100 on this toy and I see it on the floor. I can hear it now. Why do, do that to I yourself? I do my wife the same way. Yeah. I get mad. I get belligerent. <laughs> man. I buy you something and it's sitting here got dust on it. Yeah. Oh, dude, man. that's why. No. you. And then you. that's why you set budgets because then it won't hurt because it was planned for. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my tip holiday wise. Set a budget. Now, you don't have to use my numbers. If that's too low or too high, adjust it as needed. You know, don't. You know, be honest with every, yourself. You know what? And that, like you said, I think everybody needs to understand that everyone's finances is different. Yeah. Some people make more. Some people make less. Yeah. You know, if you if you find where you're at, where what's what's comfortable for you, then everything will be all right because you can go back and look at Dave Ramsey's concepts. Yeah. You can go back and put and in you can your pull own from ideas. and you can pull from it what you need. Now, let me continue on my. On my divvying up budget. Yeah. Now, we also put away for savings. We have a budget for savings, okay. how much we put away. Then we also have a budget for fun. Mm-hmm. Now, we at first, we used to keep restaurants and fun together. But for us, restaurants was literally, this is how that we eat. Yeah. We eat in this way. <laughs> so, fun for us is a, it's whatever we want it to be. Hey, let's go to a movie. Hey, let's whatever. It's that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. And you feel so much better about your your situation. Can you imagine going on a vacation and not worrying about how much money you have or how much you got because you already worried about it and it's yeah, already put away? Exactly. It's already done. Yeah. Everything was already done. You know how much you got. You, you can do everything. You work, what yeah, work what with. numbers you can work with. You can comfortably do everything because you already pre planned for mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you you know what's funny that you say that? Uh at one point <laughs> I, I and I I'm low key still trying to do it. Um so growing up everybody told me how credit cards are bad. Mm-hmm. Right? But then as I get older, I realize credit cards ain't bad. People is bad. People are bad. <laughs> you bad with you bad not with, knowing when yeah. to use your credit card. So I had this, I had this idea, brilliant. Br- in my head, it was brilliant. I'm like, all right, I'm telling my wife, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hard a month, one month, and I'm gonna get, I'm not gonna do nothing. And then what I'm gonna do is at the end of the month, I'm gonna put the all of the money in for the bills like a month prior, right? 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna use credit cards for everything. So I'm gonna get like a gas credit card or a car a car credit card and my credit card that my monthly credit card. Yeah. So now I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna just use I'm gonna just use the credit card so my cash will be there and I ain't gotta worry about that. So I was like, you know what? Let me start off slow. So I got two credit cards. So I got, <laughs> got my six hundred dollar credit card that I, that's my that's my allowance, and then I even started taking my gas out of my allowance credit card. So now I got that credit card, then I got my other credit card, my grocery credit card, right? And I got this, and they're all secure credit cards, so it's my cash anyway. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this is my limit, do do da, and uh, boy, I was hit. <laughs> I was hit a month. I said, oh, this ain't gonna work. Yeah. It's not gonna work. It gets man, it gets real, dude, yeah. and you get smacked in the face. So it and it, it happened one time, and it set me back three months. Dude, let me tell you, um. So for me, my journey financially started really in um, in college mm-hmm. when when it came down to credit cards and whatnot. So I had me a credit card. Everything was on the up and up. Everything was good. I had a full ride scholarship and they were busting me off stipends out of it or whatever. And so everything was going good. I'd max out my credit card, pay it off once the quarter new quarter came about because every quarter they had to break me off my scholarship. So it was cool. So quarter, here's your scholarship, sir. Boom, pay it off my credit card. Boom, pay off my credit card. So I started slacking in school because I got a job because I figured I needed more money. Um, Didn't have any care in the world at the time. I should have just went to school, but I got work experience under my belt. So I regret nothing. No regrets. But um, <laughs> so I, 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 I mess off in school. And then all of a sudden I get a letter saying, yeah, you, you ain't getting no more money, bro. <laughs> oh. As my bill is due. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's messed up. But so I am basically get kicked out of school and they're like, hey, and I just had got a big bonus from work. So they were like, hey, you spend this amount of cash. And of course, I'm not telling my mama because I didn't want to tell my mom I got kicked out of college. Hell no. So <laughs> they were like, hey, if you spend 2000 cash. Because we won't take credit. You have an opportunity, and they don't take financial aid. You got an opportunity to work your way back into the school. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and my mama won't know? Psh. So instead of taking the money I had from my bonus and putting it on my credit card, I put it towards the school and still ended up fucking up. <laughs> so then I was just in the hole. Yeah. And it, it was a game of catch up for damn near years. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I always tell people that that route, which you just described, is all good and dandy until it's one hiccup. Shift. All right. it takes is one hiccup, yeah. and you playing catch up for years. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's a quick fix, but my damn, yeah. it could it could go bad. No, you're you're absolutely right. So uh, to end it on a bright note, I decided to not do the credit card thing. <laughs> 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 so and and just. We had another, we had a, me and my wife had a joint account and that's our bills account. There you go. So like we, whenever something is due and we have it automatic, the automatic payment thing, we'll just put the money into the account and that, that works out better because once it's in the account and it's going to be taken out, I don't have to worry about it. I just check at the end of the month, make sure everything was paid on time, check it off in my little financial book that I have. And that just works for us. Hey, and you know what? And this is this is the golden rule. What you just said, that's the golden rule. What works for you? Exactly. You and that's why I keep saying it. It's the realest thing ever. When it comes to finances, you have to be honest with yourself because like any other goal setting, if you set a goal that's ridiculous, you're going to fail. And then through that failure, you're going to feel like you fell short. And that's not what really happened. You just set a goal that was unattainable. You got to set goals that you can extend your arm out and reach. And then you keep growing. And next thing you know, you're far down your financial path. Mm -hmm. So now let me, the things that I love from Dave Ramsey is his seven baby steps. Yeah. Super simple. And it makes your life a lot more comfortable. So the very first rule, I don't know I'm off top, but I know the first two. So the first rule is to save a thousand dollars cash as quick as humanly possible. I mean, if you got in, if you get bored one day 
or actually I recommend you go watch Dave Ramsey talk about the seven baby steps. He's very energetic, very entertaining, and very real. You know what? We'll we'll actually and we'll link put the that we'll put the link in, in our video uh, down in the uh, subscription or in the description and make sure to subscribe as well um, while we're talking about that. But he, I mean, if you gotta go in your garage and sell that old power tool that you've been looking at, talking about you're gonna use for who knows how long, we got too many ways to get money now. You got offer up, uh, let go, blah 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 blah. Go through your stuff. I know people who still have all their old cell phones ever. Go get rid of it. Save that money. Get you a thousand dollars. And now, and and let's be honest here. If that thousand dollars for some reason sounds too big, which I truly don't believe it is, it's not. not. Because you you really look in your garage or look but in your you, closet. You, you can't you, say that without because yeah, you'll be contradicting I'll be contra- And that's why I'm saying you yeah. got to be honest with yourself. So what I recommend is $500. And actually, he has a college student uh, set up, too, where for people who are in school and they don't have that major income the same way as other people or people who work a full-time or whatnot, mm-hmm. is you get you $500 as quick as possible, legally, and you save it. You tuck it, you hide it from yourself because with that $500 or that $1,000 or that amount, it, what it's for is for absolute emergency only. When I say emergency only, I mean you are about to, your car is about to be impounded. Yeah. Your, you blew out all four tires on the freeway. You the, know what though? We had, see, the, it's, this is such a crazy topic. We were just having a conversation about what's an emergency for you. It might not be an emergency. It may not for be an emergency yeah. for me. Very true. You know, like, for example, um, I live in the desert. True. If I can't get to work via my car, yeah, that's an arm and a leg. So well, that's an emergency. Well, let me, let me tell you this. Let me clarify and let me try to simplify it. And maybe this will, um, this will sum it up. If it affects you getting to work and how you get to work, if it affects you and your family eating, if it affects um, your health, these are emergencies. Okay. That's these are absolute emergencies. Yeah. Now, because for me, I won't consider. Now, let me let me show you how serious this is. Oh, so and so is having a birthday party. We don't have enough to get a gift. That's no, not an emergency. An emergency. That's not an emergency. Oh, um, everybody's taking a last minute trip to so and so. Only way I can afford it is if I use my emergency fund. That's not an emergency. Emergencies are whatever, however you feed your family and what you feed your family Mm -hmm. and your health. Those are emergencies. And you come up with every other way, you hustle every other way legally. Before you touch that money, because what you're going to realize is you don't need to touch it. I've had mine for over a year now. Mm -hmm. My emergency fund. I haven't touched it and I've had some stuff go down, but I haven't touched it. And then if you do have to touch it, um, because actually at work, I gave a class on this using a lot of Dave Ramsey's major points and including his seven steps. Um, I gave a presentation on it and had him watch a lot of Dave Ramsey videos and even took him to the conference. Mm-hmm. I had a client who, instead of, because what a lot of times people do is go get payday loans for the smallest things. Oh, I need a hundred bucks so I can order a cake for a birthday party. Okay. Why would you go get a payday loan? You would have been, you would have did better to ask everybody for $20. Yeah. But that's not the point. So now, um, her kid busted a window and she was able to pay for it cash out of pocket without worrying about it. Yeah. Now, of course it's not like money grows. Well, money does grow on tree, but that's not the point. Um, she was able to handle a, an emergency without, without worrying about it, without a big deal, without it crippling her household. Because I, cause what I've learned in the time that I've been looking through finances and interacting with people and looking at um, looking at people's different budgets and whatnot and just their whole financial health, it's usually not as much money as people think. No, it really like it's not. 
it's usually not as much as people think. Like, I want to say a majority of people are crippled with debt that's around 10000 and lower. And that ain't nothing. And in terms of the grand scheme of things, that is a very small amount of money. Yeah. Now, yes, in your situation, it may be a lot, but I'm talking in the grand scheme, in the average, it's not that I much. Mean. Because what you'll see is a lot of people walking around here day to day, walking around with $100,000 in debt. Mm-hmm. You'll see that. Oh, man, that's, you know, would when you, I see. You, when, is it safe to say that's like average? Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that, but I. There's a lot of people. It's a, it's a school. Oh, bro, dude. That's why, like, real talk. When I see somebody with a fancy car, all I see is a high payment. Mm -hmm. Trucks. When I see that, all I see is a high payment. I don't see a good investment. No. Cars are some of the worst investments on earth. If you go. 40% of his value instantly once you drive it off the lot. Because you believe me, the moment you drive it off the lot, if you turned around, they would buy it back at at least ten grand lower than what they sold it to you. So, huh, this is this is something that's real. That's this is something that's real to me. Yeah, and, and and let shit me should be real to everybody else. And and let me tell you, and I'm gonna get serious with you. You got folks learn the difference between needs and wants. A want is to get a rundown version of a BMW just to say you have a BMW. Yeah. Now, the smarter way to handle that would be to take a little bit less of that money that you're about to spend on that old BMW and go take it and buy a decent used Toyota. Now, I'm not telling y'all how to live your lives, but when you are sitting here paying $500 on a 2000 uh, 2008 Mercedes when you could be paying $500 on a top of the line Toyota brand new Camry. Toyota to- yeah. Toyota <laughs> Camry X'd out with yeah. everything on it plush and heated seats but you'd rather roll around in a basic edition of an old Mercedes mm-hmm. all because of what for looks the name. for the names and then the what name, people yeah. don't understand that aspire to have these vehicles the upkeep have you seen how much oil changes cost and brake jobs cost on on Mercedes? This is how you know they're bad. When you got to take them to a specific a specific place, you place. can't just go you can't anywhere. Just go anywhere to get them done. Like, no, that's why I'm like, what do you people? But that's the. It's not what you can buy. It's what you can keep. I can go out and buy a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I can go buy a lot of things. Yeah. I've had people ask me, why don't you live closer to where you work? Cause heads up. I, I mean, just give, keep it real with you. I commute damn near an hour every day to work Mm -hmm. that I do that. Yeah. Now, could I afford to live closer to my um, job? Yes. But I don't do, I don't do that moving for work Yeah. because jobs change. Yeah. Not only that, but. You got to also think about the prices of the home yeah. you're moving to and then what it is to get into this yeah. new home. Yeah, and, and oh. then you got to think long term like, hey, yeah, I would love to be at the job I'm at for so many more years, but can I truly picture myself being there for the lifetime of the home loan? Yeah. No. Nope. Would I hope so? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know, but a lot of people make decisions based on their current financial income. Not their savings, not anything that they're generating, just the current what I get on my check. Yeah. And I'm like, you got to be careful with that. You yeah, that, re- this is why when you go out, when you get a raise, don't mean your debt get raised. Oh, yes, too. that is something so I see people raise, do all the time. You go buy a yeah. 2017, 18. Yeah, all of a sudden, oh, man, they increased you know, my Mercedes paycheck $10. Bills. I can go buy a car now. Mm-hmm. No. How about you just continue saving and go cash out a car, yeah. go get you an A to B, and maybe a, maybe you can spend a little more and get you an A, B to D. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I can drive Some around. you can just run, run down. Yeah. You know, just do the basic. Anything other than the basic you got to do to it, hopefully by then you have enough money to get yourself a reliable car. A reliable car. You know, but. But just be honest with yourselves. That's That's key. Being honest with your finances, really sitting down with your partner. And um, if you're single, take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact that it's just you and you don't owe anybody. Um, you don't owe anybody. You're not. Uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? You're not responsible for anybody other than yourself. That is a time where you can truly stack. Mm -hmm. You can truly get that bread up. You can get your finances in order. You can be financially stable. And tip to people out there who looking to build families. This is something that um, that I dealt with, and I'm really just opening up to you guys. This is something I seriously dealt with is learning about your partner's finances. You know, um, you got to really ask those questions because love don't pay bills. <laughs> if that ain't the truest shit. It, it don't, man. Right. So if you jump into a situation, well, I love her, but she coming with $700 a month in student mm-hmm. loans. And then that ain't counting what credit card bills she got. Yeah. That ain't counting uh, her mom back in the day opened up two apartments in her name mm-hmm. um, and f- burnt out on them. You know what I mean? Like, all, I'm not saying they don't just des- people who would mess up credit and bad debt don't deserve love. But you need to evaluate if Shit, the love you a, have for them is worth the struggle you're love. about to take on. Yeah, that's its own person yeah, you need to think you, about. Yeah, you're basically taking on a whole nother everything. Mm-hmm. And you have to, and once again, this is all can be summed up by being honest with yourself. Yep. I love you, but do I love you enough to take on the fact that now we're going to, not only on top of all the other bills we got, we're going to have $700 worth of school loans and then we're going to have a hundred and some dollars worth of credit card bills Mm -hmm. and then by you having those struggles that means you ain't worked on trying to fix it yeah and mindset so now i got to figure out if you on track to still build this debt up are you on track to take it down yeah so where are we at and these and this is why you when it comes to finances you got to involve everybody in the house and then you got to talk about it you have to talk about it um, not specific numbers. Everybody don't need to be in your business, but you got to make it real. Write it down. Um, write it in a journal. Post it up on the wall in your room. Have it on a post-it note at your desk um, or on your laptop. I'll be dead or free. reminders on your phone. Yeah, reminders on your phone. Give yourself encouragement. Mm-hmm. Just like how people treat weight loss plans and diets. Like, you have to constantly remind yourself. Yeah, this is just as important. Yeah. Oh, man. Jeez. Financial health is just as important as um, physical health. Because without finances, once again, money isn't everything, but it's up there with air. Yep. Like, there's not too much you can do without it. Well, speaking of financial freedom, man. What about the microtransactions? Oh, okay. Rolling it over into gaming. <laughs> now, we've talked about this before, and you've heard me um, pump this out. We vote with our dollar. How we spend our money lets companies know what we're okay with. So what you've seen happen recently is with EA and Battlefront 2. Yep. They took a major kick to the nuts. And you do see, the reason why they took that is because the it, it didn't make sense. Yeah. If I put two hundred dollars upon the sixty four thirty nine I paid for the game into this game and mm-hmm. don't achieve everything, everything, what the hell, hell are we it, doing? Yeah. This sounds Whoa. like gambling. Yeah. So and that's what the problem was. Yep. People were trying to get Dark Vader. One dude tested it out. Yep. He put two hundred dollars in the game and then get Dark Vader and then said, you know what? It's like four hundred dollars because he only had half enough half of the credits. Yeah, I remember that exactly. So to me, when you think when you talk about microtransactions in video games, I like it when it's aesthetics. When it's yeah. When it it's only visual things. It don't do anything to power you. Or you don't pay like to that. win. Exactly. The reason why I like that is because I don't gotta buy it. Yep. Don't, my character don't got to be the Jamaican colors because uh-huh. I want them to look that color. Yeah. I want them to look that color. I can wait until, I, you know, I come across a little cash here or I get enough coins or credits or whatever it is in the game to do that. Yep. So when EA, first when EA took it down, I was like, okay, let's see what we do. What they're going to do here. They're going to either cut this, cut all of this stuff in half mm-hmm. or they're going to... You know, they're going to make it where people going to be able to actually achieve this by putting mm-hmm. money, extra money. Because the they were game. saying it would take over 40 hours to unlock one character Dog, based on the credit uh, grind. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. There's so, no, like, you're telling me. Some games don't even get played for 40 hours. Bro, you're telling me 
I got to sit down, and and we you can only speak from the casual gamer standpoint. And this is how I look at the, it: the one percent is going to always get there. Oh yeah, and this is and I'm sorry to cut you off, and that's the point that we really come from. We're coming from a um, well, I come from. I like to consider myself casual, even though I'm really not. I grind and I put mad hours in the games. Yeah, no. But I like to speak from the casual perspective exactly. because they're the ones who spend the most money. They're the ones who go out and get the game to reach a million sold. Mm-hmm. And but they're also the ones who drive the gaming market. So if the casual player was okay with this, it would have changed the way games are going. Yeah. Even further down this deadly ass rabbit hole with microtransactions and continue i'm sorry so you know what with that with that point being said with uh the the casual gamer though and you're right i guess what i was getting ready to say was that when you have the casual gamer at home and on a high note they can play for four hours Mm -hmm. that's a and that's a day off that's a that's a lot yeah, four hours of gameplay that they can play to grind to do this, and you don't count cutscenes and yep. don't count loading. Yep. Like none of this stuff is instant. It got to load. It got to yep. get into the server. Got to do all of this. So now I got to do all of that, play four hours a day, and you telling me I still can't get Dark Vader? Yeah. I'm, the game gonna be out two years before I can get I can reach get Darth, Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Oh hell no, Bro. That's the problem. So like when we when we when we talk about game, and I, I'm more of the person that I I stick up for the casual gamer when it when it's outrageous. Yeah, and this is a strong you know case for that. I but I stick up for the one percent as well when it makes sense. Oh yeah, you see what I'm saying? Which we can piggyback to destiny yeah that's exactly what i was gonna say Mm -hmm. so the one percent in destiny they destroyed the game destiny 2 is destroyed and what i mean by destroyed if you think about destiny 1 there was stuff in destiny 1 that wasn't found until year 2 true year 3 right and that's because people were going hard on the game trying to figure out stuff there's they they even troll they even uh kind of hinted at there being extra loot boxes inside of uh, the Vault of Glass. You see what I'm saying? And people still looking for this stuff to this day, probably. So with the 1% with that, when you're in... And yeah, that's that's microtransactions as well. The microtransactions that Destiny offers you is all looks. Cosmetic. You all know, cosmetic. It's not going to make your character any better. It ain't going to make your character... Sp- Faster, stronger, can jump higher. None of that stuff. You just look, but you just look a different way, mm-hmm. right? So when you get into games like that, De- like um, Battlefront, yep. where like I'm trying to get to the top guy and yeah. I gotta pay, and if I don't pay, I'm not gonna reach him, or I gotta play a year then pay a year. No, that's ridiculous. So uh, with that, with with the casual gamer, I can understand why they can be, why they'll be upset. Because, like I said, the one percent that plays Battlefield, I'm talking about, like they pay yeah. eight hours a day. They're gonna get it. Ten hours. They're gonna, get everything. They're gonna get everything. Yeah, everything's gonna be gotten. They're gonna unlock some stuff. There's somebody out there grinding right now. Oh, because yeah. Because it's always a race. It's always a race to the first. So, like for example, the first week somebody was in Destiny Two. Somebody was maxed. Yep. Max light level. First yep. week game came out, got the max light level. Why? Because. That you can consider him the one percent. Yep, the person that's gonna sit there and grind the lives game. the game. So, microtransactions are. I don't think that there's nothing wrong with them when they're cosmetic. But once it influences gameplay, that's when it becomes a problem. Because I'm I didn't pay sixty bucks to be told that oh yeah spend another thirty and you'd be all right. Thirty, you'd be all right. You no, you spend another thirty and you may have the chance to be okay. There you go. It doesn't even guarantee. It's not even guaranteeing. Yeah, it's not even guaranteeing. I put if if I put two hundred dollars in the game and I don't get everything, everything. Oh hell, dude. Because then at that point, now it classifies into something that makes it illegal. Yeah, gambling. So now it's gambling. But now you get into when you sit there and you think about think about uh, Call of Duty. Mm. When Call of Duty came out, when they started dropping, which was which is ridiculous. They started dropping variants. That dropped from supply drops. So now these guns did something different. They did something extra that boosted my gameplay somehow. 
and I'm I'm buying a gang of supply drops, and you're not giving me the gun I'm I'm pissed off now. Yep. Now I'm upset because <laughs> now it's, it feels like yo, I done gave you three hundred dollars, and I still ain't got the variant of the gun that I'm looking for. Oh hell to the no. Yep. So now I'm pissed off. So. And this is why, like, I never had a problem with Destiny's microtransaction. And this is why Destiny never died because of it. You hear, if you were there and you listen to all those people that bash microtransactions from Destiny was because, oh, yeah, I can see it already now. It's going to be something that's going to be, like, game changer. And you're only going to have to be able to buy it. And it wasn't true. All they gave you was shaders. Yep. They gave you a specific gear that came at level 3 or 10, ten that yeah. you had to infuse into it and they it gave it to you for free. Yep. All you had to do was wait 4 weeks or wait 5 weeks and you will get every piece. Yep. So I'm like, yo, y'all, we got to as a community, we got to know what to accept and what not to accept. And the way we do that is not through complaining on YouTube, not through complaining in comments, not to complaining on Twitter. It's through not buying the bullshit. Mm-hmm. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, they trying to steal your damn money. Yeah. Like it, <laughs> it, it. Simple as that. It's simple as that. And if it seems like bull crap, as a consumer, we need to do better mm-hmm. and wait. Let somebody who's out there who's paid, such as video game reviewers and YouTubers and whatnot, people like we're trying to be. Um, yeah. Let them review it, and then you watch the review, you watch gameplay, you get a feel from it, you talk to the people you buy your games from, whether it be GameStop, Best Buy, etc. You talk to them and see how they're feeling, and then you make an informed purchase. You wouldn't go buy a car the way people buy video games. Nope. There's no way in hell people oh, would buy a car. No. You wouldn't buy food the way people buy video games. Nope. Like, no, you're not going to go and spend $60 at this restaurant. I need to open up that pizza first. Thank you. I need I to know it. what people look, talk about. I'm reading reviews. Yeah. We need to do that as a community yeah. before we go out and purchase. And that includes pre-ordering. Pre, pre, see, we kind of, well, I'm, I'm not sure if we see different aisle pre-ordering. Pre-ordering to me, it depends on the game. Because if, I, if I'm going to get the game, I'm going to get the game. So why not get everything that comes with the pre-orders as well? But let me you tell know? you this: that's how they got. That's that's how they, that's how we led to the problem. Battlefront. Yeah, that's but- that's literally everything you just said stems and is was the origin of how of the origin of how we got to but here. Isn't this Battlefront One didn't have these drops in them? Did they? Mm, Battlefront One was a shell of a game. It was like Destiny. Okay, so where you bought, one, they promised all of this. What? No, but wasn't you had it that, only multiplayer. That's why I said it was a shell of okay. a game. Okay, so with okay, so now thinking about that. Okay, you know it's only a multiplayer game, mm-hmm. right? And I guess you can use Destiny as an, as the, the the counterpart to it. If I'm a huge Destiny fan, right, and this is where it differs. I don't like I love the lore in Destiny. You see what I'm saying? I love the lore and I love the mechanics of Destiny. But let me let me let me you, tell you this, ahead. not to cut you off. You can I could have found the lore for everything in Destiny 1 without buying the game. Well, the codexes. Well, you're right. You're right. Online. All the lore was in books online. Yes. Literally, not even figuratively, not somebody put them there. The company put the lore so you would hear a name in the game, and, and I'm giving this as perspective to people listening. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't hear, for those who haven't played Destiny, You would. it's not like the game produced this lore to you in your face or you've seen a cutscene. No, it wasn't in Or game. somebody talked about it. No. You'll hear a name mentioned, and then all of a sudden, you go online, and there's a whole chapter on that person's name. Mm-hmm. So, so... So that's why you call it a shell, a shell of, a, of game. a game. Now, when I'm when I'm talking about with the with the pre-orders though, say if de- say Destiny didn't have the open world, well the semi open world pro open world environment that it has now, and say it didn't have Crucible, you wouldn't buy it because you weren't you're not that intrigued in not mm-hmm. getting what you want. True. For example, when you buy like Terminator Salvation. Right or that's strictly story mode. Mm-hmm. Right, so say it says, "Hey, pre-order Terminator Salvation and get the 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 uh, the the new Terminator outfit." 
or whatever. I wouldn't even. You see, it down. if I'm a huge fan of the game, oh well, then yeah, I'm gonna get it. You know, Destiny Two. Destiny Two said pre-order the game, get the cold heart, right? As a as a fan of it, as a fan of Destiny One, as a fan of the raids, as a fan of that. Oh shit! I'm gonna do it. But now, but let me tell you, you made an informed decision. Yes. Now th- you are coming from somebody who was a fan. Okay. Me? Yes, I enjoyed the game. I probably played more Destiny One than any other game on my system. Mm-hmm. Um, up until Destiny Two came out, and now I'm in Warframe. But the point is, as much as I enjoyed Destiny, I had to wait until Year Three to rebuy it to enjoy everything about it. Because before that point, I didn't enjoy it. Okay. And the only reason I bought it is because of all the promises that were made by the company. I did my research. I was the one who told you about Destiny. Well, yeah. But the difference, I guess, since you told me about it and I, and I played Destiny from day one to up to now. True. You see what I'm saying? And when I tell you that, and I'm, I, I'm not arguing your, no, yeah. your love of the game or dislike for the game. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, my perspective on the yeah. game was that the game was cool. I didn't, I mean, think about it. Think about this. You look at your setup now, right? Mm-hmm. You play with your computer in front of you. True. You play with your system right here. True. It's not like, it's not like old school now where you sitting there and you got the, the, the chair and you don't got your computer, computers in the next room. Everything is it's sitting right, right in front. front of me. So this is why it wasn't a problem for me. Because it's like, oh, dredging your, who's dredging your? Who's Judging York? Look him up. Pop up real quick. Say, oh, Judging York is that guy. Cool. Back to the game. So, in in and it specifically wasn't like that. Got gotcha. you. You know, most of the stuff in the game you had to wait for. So, sure. they, they left a lot of cliffhangers. Mm-hmm. Like you don't know who this person is. You don't know what that person is. Or they kind of describe, like, the guy. Okay. So, Destiny 2 is dropping on December 5th, The Curse of Osiris, right? Sure. Um, they describe Osiris as infinite, like he had infinite radiance. So is he always Sunbreaker? Yeah. Like this shit got me like, whoa! Like that's where that's where the end, that's where I become excited and, from about. And I respect how much you love the story, and I I truly I truly can appreciate that. And for me, I just feel like as a consumer, they promised a lot, delivered very little, mm-hmm. and I can't reward that by giving you my yeah. On my blind allegiance, mm-hmm. I can't. You know, I, and that's coming from somebody who takes pride in voting with my damn dollar. Oh no, you're, but it works for you because you enjoyed the game. Yeah, you enjoyed what they but gave that's, you. That's 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 where the difference. That's is. where the points is at. Because yeah. I, like I said, I'm not trying to change yeah. your view on it. Yeah. The only thing that I I just what I liked about the game was that okay, we got this raid. Mm-hmm. The, the shit's hard. It was hard. The game when it first came out was hard there was it wasn't easy to just get up in there and jump in there I and agree. think you can play destiny because it wasn't like that so when, when it comes when it came out we're playing it i'm playing it when i tell you that that game sat in my system for for damn near four well three years right three years straight when i when i look at my disc it has a yellow ring just from being read by the same that shit yeah. been in the, the damn system for forever. Yep. And that because it was the most played game that I played that game so much it's like number one on my list. Yep. And and nothing topped SOCOM because I was playing yeah. SOCOM that much for days straight. Yeah. That, and I wasn't going to school when SOCOM yeah. came out. So you can see where I'm saying like where the love came from for the game. And I and I do understand your point because everything that they promised you you didn't get. Yeah. In the game. At some point, did they give it to you? To some extent. Okay-ish. But I still had to go elsewhere. When yeah. there's games like Mass Effect that puts the lore in the game. Or like you, Warframe. You, or even Warframe. <laughs> you have these stuff in there. Well, you, you have these other games that give you the, okay, this is what you're trying to do? Yo, this is it. This is how you do it. This is the blueprint. You yep. can jock them or whatever you want to call it. But yeah. You put the lore in the game, the game became 10 times better. It really did, immediately. You know what I'm saying? Because once again, I played Destiny 2. See, and my 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 point with the story, this is what I like uh, telling people, is if you liked, if you liked The Wire, or you liked, um, what's another show like The Wire out? If you liked Game of Thrones, if you liked shows like that, 
if they turn Destiny into a show like those, it'd be a damn good show. It'd be a good show because it's so much things Drama, going on in the story. People becoming leaders, different and names, falling off. You don't know who these names being is. Killed you, you, by, yeah. you see what I'm saying? You just don't know what it is. So, oh, no, the story's broken. Why do I have to read this about this? Or why do I have to wait until this sequel to hear about this guy? They talk about this battle, but they never showed the battle. I mean, in Game of Thrones, they talk about the Mad King. Did you ever see him? Yeah, they show him. I mean, did they show, like, the killing of him where the dude killed him? When was that? They It was in the flashback. Uh so sure. as no okay flashbacks don't count because no, they show flashback they tell you flashbacks in Destiny. no but they actually showed you a flashback it, oh. see this is the difference and, I, and I'm happy to use Game of Thrones Game of Thrones shows you the flashback okay. now yes they don't show the big battle at okay the, uh, at that's the, oh, that's what I'm talking about they don't about. show Robert Baratheon killing that's Rygard, what I'm talking uh, about Rhaegar Targaryen they don't do all that but they are they do show major scenes mm-hmm. like they showed the battle at the tower where you first meet spoiler alert who you first find out who Jon Snow really is. Yeah. Um also um but with game but with Destiny. This is this let me tell you. Before you go though. My what I'm why I why I why yeah, I ahead. chose those, why I chose those two things, those two specific points is because I've heard a lot of people talk about the the Battle of Twilight Gap. They yeah. don't show nothing about the Battle of Twilight Gap. They only talk about it. Okay? Well, you get the map. But they look, talk about it in the map. Just but, like a flashback is like reading the lore. But let me, isn't it? Am but, I am I am I just making it up? The no, only difference not. between it is because one's an actual show and one's a video game. And let me, tell you know what I'm saying? You, you're just his, not getting the cinematics. And this is the problem. Historically, I usually don't have to dig deep outside of a video game to get the story right. of the video game. So that's why. Now, okay, if you want to claim that they're trading on new water. Then no, fine. I would. I wouldn't even say that. Okay. I I chalked it up to the writer left. Oh well, yeah, that's he, the biggest problem. The dude that wrote the story is gone. gone. So and now you left. He left right. What was it? Six months before release, and so, all the and they scrapped so much so of this, the story. Exactly. They even scrapped the darkness. That's why I said to myself, "Well, shit, the writer left. What happened?" Yeah. You know, I don't expect them to tell me why the writer left, but they didn't have to scrap the story. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, damn. Well. Y'all telling me this is the only guy that knew what was Thank going you. on? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all really had a whole setup <laughs> so I'm with not, one man I'm leading not, everything? What, what what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to defend the actions of Bungie. Because, yeah, there's some shit they, they, I could have gave advice on. Anybody could have gave advice on. Um, What I'm trying to say is that, like, just because that one thing happened doesn't scrap the mechanics of the game and what we thought the game was going to be. Oh, mechanically, it's one of the best shooters around. Something happened in the game. I mean, I mean, if we really want to jump at it, look at Call of Duty Ghost. Infinity Ward, what? Left may respawn. Sledgehammer game had to jump in and create this and create it. Oh, I think that was Modern Warfare 3. So Sledgehammer game, who the hell is Sledgehammer game? Where did these people come from? People, and then what happened? People, oh, the Vector is, is outrageously whack. It should be better. So, as a community, I think what we need to do is is more, is pay attention to those things because they need our feedback. And not, we and don't not, just, they're and not no, give us, give but, us but a let game. But let me tell you where the feedback needs to come in. Also, it needs to come in before we make the purchase. That's correct. Because if but, we live in, let me tell you why, though. Let me tell you why. Uh-huh. We live in a day and age where I can watch somebody do a review on a box Mm -hmm. I can literally watch somebody do a review on on a box box. there's a review for everything there's kids out here who watch toy reviews people don't even buy the toys they go and watch other people play with them I I learned how to change my headlight out through YouTube there is a you. There's a how to and a review guide for every damn thing. You're right. I'm from shaking s- from sex toys to fucking <laughs> I'm, video games. I'm shaking because two episodes ago we spoke about should there be betas and should there be demos in games. Yeah, and I said that it's ruining the experience <laughs> because. We're getting the game early. Most of the time, we're getting the full game. Yeah. Most of the time, you may like the game, and then when the game comes out, there's something totally different. So now we feel like we're being lied to. So 
I'm gonna ask you. Okay. What would you do to fix that? What would I do to fix it? Um, as a creator, are you asking me as a creator as, or as a consumer, as somebody? No, buying the game? as a creator, because okay. if I'm well, telling is, you, well, let me let me tell you. Under promise, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Okay. If Watch Dogs wouldn't have promised to make this great, if Ubisoft wouldn't have promised to make Fuck this Watch great, Dogs. well, yeah, of course. But if they wouldn't have promised to make this glorious fucking game mm-hmm. and paid to have the ads on every, remember the ads were everywhere yeah. from Hulu to um, YouTube. There was at everywhere. billboards. There were ads for everything. You're talking for about Watch the first Dogs. one, right? The first one. I hate that game. No. And as it's okay to hate that game, mm-hmm. you have it's it's reasonable to hate that game. Yeah. But as a creator, what I would do seriously, if you really asked me, and I was sitting at the marketing team, I would under, um, I would um, uh, I would uh, not overestimate, and I would over deliver. So if you under promise, under promise, I feel like that's not even a real term, but I would make small promises, mm-hmm. and then I would make. I would have people mind blown. Yeah. So now I guess, let me let me show you an example of that. Do you think under promising kind of affects would affect sales? It would affect pre orders. Because it would affect pre orders. See, and this is the problem. Companies thrive and get their rocks off with pre orders. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, we got a million pre ordered. So that means we're gonna sell a million. Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah, you'll get really damn close, but they ride the high of the pre-orders. So then they're in in their eyes, whatever we already made is successful. Boom, on to the next on to the next game. Mm-hmm. They're sitting around their big table cheering. We pre-ordered a million, so we're at least gonna get nine nine hundred thousand. But you know what else? You know what else? I I just was thinking about. Imagine if imagine if Warframe came out on a bigger scale, right? Than it is now, because I mean it's been out for a couple years, Mm -hmm. and not a lot of people even play the game as much as other games out there. True. So imagine if Warframe came out right, Mm -hmm. and pre-order bonus was a prime, Mm -hmm. right? And say we say we were delivered on Warframe, and people thought the way like yo, I'm gonna wait to pre-order just to wait because I don't know. I don't know what the game gonna be like, okay. and I don't want to risk it because if if it's a bad game, I don't, I'm not gonna play it. And it turns out to be get, I mean, t- the game turns out to be way over expected what they were, what they thought they were gonna get. So they got even more. Do you think people have that mindset like, yo, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out on the cold heart. I don't want to miss out on this pre-order bonus. Well, let me. I don't want to miss out on that. And let me tell you, and that's that's praying. On the consumer, because that's like a flip of the coin. It, it's no, no, it's not, not for me. Well, yeah, not for like, you. No, but not. this is, but this, is, but let me tell you, mm-hmm. I am really trying to get people into a mindset of fuck you. This is what you said you were gonna give me, mm-hmm. so I want to pay for that. Yeah, and if you're not giving me that, you're not getting my money. Uh-huh. That's where I'm at. No, and I- it took years to get to that point because you're talking to a guy who was buying every new game that came out. Yeah, you got a lot of games. I was buying every new game that got, came out. You got a lot of games. I got to a point where I'm like, hell no, because I understand as a consumer, we need to take hold and really let these companies know you're only around because we fund you. Yeah. No, you you are absolutely right. And so all you can give me all the scenarios in the world. No, I, I let me let I me get let me, you. And let and that's why that's why I'm saying from my perspective. Yeah. Now, coming from a general standpoint, I would still say no. Because if you're a real game and you really are about the players, you would make it available to be grinded for. Or if it's going to be given, it's be given to everybody. Thank you. That's what I said. Thank you. I or, mean, uh, or give it a time to release. The only reason why... Or, I, you know what I mean? Listen, like, you were the one that said to me that it's a it's a big money grab. It's a money grab. Right? That's all it is. And, the, and like I said, the reason why, the reason why I said I agree with you and I just brought up the other point because it was it, first of all that's me playing devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. Second of all, it, it, I'm asking you these things because if we do go about it the way you just said it, right? Mm-hmm. There's no need for pre-orders no more. 
there's no need for pre-order bonuses. Well, you know, because pre-orders now, came about because of Call of Duty. I know that because of the season and they pass. Changed, they they destroyed the see, whole market. See, with, with all the sins of all the pro- ailments we're dealing with the game industry as cons- on the consumer end, because the companies are winning. They're over here. You're over here buying. Okay, people are buying full price games that are online only. See, the people are, you know, you, there yeah. are all these things. With Call of Duty, though, the pre order with with that season pass thing, it made sense, right? Now, when you sit, no, think about it. When you, if you're, if you, and you're thinking about it on a big scale, Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty, we already had this conversation. People play Call of Duty year round. It comes out every but, year. Bro, but let me let me explain something to you. Let me tell you what they did. They repackaged what we used to have called expansion packs. Yeah. And they turned it into small scale. They chopped up one expansion pack into three. No, they did it- not. No, they did not. Because expansion packs gave you like four or five maps and it gave you a zombies map. And what they did was they just gave you all of them at one price for one price. So instead of paying no, 30 no, bucks. No, 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 no. I'm talking in terms. I'm comparing this shit to WoW. I'm comparing this to Diablo. I'm comparing this to you yeah. got to you got to think expansion packs for and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments c- expansion packs were a PC gaming thing. Yes. Now listen. When you're thinking of those but no but listen. Those make sense when you talk about it that way. Now let okay, let's talk in terms of modern. Let's make it easy. Have you played any of the expansions uh any of the DLC for um the season pass DLC for Witcher. No, I don't even think they did a season pass. Uh-uh. It was just DLC. No, you get so a, use Fallout. You get a basically a whole new game. Yeah, I know that. Now, or just thinking about Fallout. Now let's compare it. Fallout New Vegas compared to Fallout Four. Mm-hmm. You got way more for way less out of Fallout New Vegas than you did with Fallout Four. I didn't, you know, I didn't play Vegas. You I know should. you played Vegas. New Vegas. A lot of people consider it one of the best ones. Uh-huh. I think because Obsidian made it. Three was amazing. But a lot of it's funny. A lot of people argue with you. Yeah. You play, um, you play New Vegas, and it's a lot more RPG. It's mm-hmm. a lot more. Hey, I have a demolition stat of ten, so that means I really can defuse this bomb. That means I can. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It has a lot more of that. Okay. So a lot of checkpoints, um, skill checks. Um, but that, that's beside my point. My point is. Things are getting cheaper. You know what? Things are... People... These DLCs, these pre-orders, they're cheapening. They're making it easier on the the creators and the, the producers and the companies, but making it more expensive on us as consumers. You know what else you need to think about? When you're talking about PC gaming, how often do they create another game? You see what I'm saying? True. These are more well. Up- uh, we're these, not gonna dive down that hole because if you go on Steam, it's new games every game. Yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying but is, look at, you, look at, don't look at commercial releases. Look at, look at, look at World of Warcraft. Look at Dota. Look at League of Legends. So when they add something new to the game, it may be a lot of this, a lot of that, but that's because they're not adding, they're not giving you a new game. And if so, you do get a new game, it'll be a couple years from now. So, so it, now my when I when we were talking about Call of Duty. You got to think about it. I'm used to that. I play PC games. Call of Duty. I'm talking about Call of Duty World at War. I've been buying them expansions since then. And when you're telling me that each expansion costs 30 bucks in an ex- expansion. Now you give me the option to say, oh, I know I'm going to get them. I love Black Ops 2. I mean, and Black Ops me, 2 but is let me, they started but, ah, it. So, ah, there you go. Let me stop you right there. I figured it out. I got my words. When you already know what you're going to come out with and it's already in the code and it's already written in the DNA of the game that you already sold me. How? Bro, they look what happened with House of Wolves and, and Destiny. Yeah, that's, no. that's what I'm saying. With This is what I'm saying. With Call of Duty... They didn't. None of that stuff came out no, saying but, that they were camp. They were camp. So when they this, peep this, if you already have it designed and you already have it written out and you already have the code, because you're not writing it as you're selling it to me, you already have it made. Okay, this he, day and age is he, the, what okay, we're dealing with. Even with that, say you take take that out of your mind, right? Because you the only way because that's how you make. No, listen, listen to me. 
it, the only way you know that that stuff is in there is if somebody tells you it's in there. So even they if they do. put it, no, they don't. The, with the House of Wolves, somebody hacked it and showed it that it was already in the no, game. No, but but think what about I'm that. Saying, no, you gotta l- just listen to me. So we supposed Call to blindly Duty, just buy it? No, I understand. Listen, I understand what you're saying. Okay. With Call of Duty World at War, no one was telling us that there was expansions already in the game. So what happens is the game comes out. We buy the game. We play the game for three months. Three months, they drop an expansion. Remember, Xbox was getting them first. So Xbox getting the expansion first, and the expansion gives you four different maps, four new Call of Duty uh, multiplayer maps, a zombie map, and it's like, oh, shit, I love zombies. I want the zombie map. So now I got to spend... 30 bucks on this expansion to play this expansion. Now, you're speaking on the perspective of now. Speak on this per- perspective back then. Back then, you didn't know. All you knew is that an expansion was coming out and you wanted to play. As a consumer back then, True. I'm like, I want it. True. As of a consumer right now, I second guess it because I was like, man, I think about all of this shit. Uh, I'm going to be playing this shit for a year. I ain't playing this shit for two years. Think of, Use Warframe as an example. Warframe drops a big update and Warframe. they give you... All types of shit for free. You see what I'm saying? I haven't put no money why in the, the Why the hell would I want to go buy a Call of Duty map pack that I'm going to play for a month? Thank you. Think about the last Call of Duty map pack comes out. They come out every three months. Yep, quarterly. Right? And, so that's, give, not a, and that's not an accident that they come out quarterly yeah. right around the uh, every time you got to give your quarterly reports fiscally. Excuse it's me. all money driven. Yeah, so um, take... Take the 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 concept of the the business out of it and just be a gamer for a second. If somebody tells you, "Yo, religiously you play Call of Duty, mm-hmm. religiously you love Call of Duty, and you're gonna buy this map pack every time," so instead of paying yeah, ninety bucks, it would be. It sounds easier to just pay exactly. For, yeah. So when you speak on the perspective of what you're saying, that's why I say, "Yo, I get it," because I say the same thing. This is why I haven't bought a call. This is why I haven't bought a Call of Duty since this Call of Duty came out because I'm not about to waste my money. True. Just like 2K, just like Madden. Yeah. No, I get the same damn game every year. Bro, you see my FIFA and 2K they down there. They're there. 2K15. I got. I only they bought. Are, they're about to come out with 2K19. Exactly. I am not buying them yeah. because it don't make no sense. I, so yeah, yeah. When you speak on the grand scheme of, with the grand scale this is why i say i'm playing i'm gonna play devil's advocate got you you which we have to which we have to do we have to see the other side of it when you make sense when you say because i've always said this and it's gonna be my last point imagine if a game and there's games out there like that but when you think about because console gaming and pc gaming is two different worlds very true there's two different worlds either you're in both of them or you're on one true so when you get a game, and I'm just going to speak of console gaming, say you got, say SOCOM was still relevant, right? And SOCOM was great. Everybody still played it. People still played it. People put time and money in it. So instead of giving me a new game every year, say you gave me like a really huge update, right? That gave me 15 other maps. That gave me another game. Another game, the game. But just an update. Exactly. That's, I, I'm intrigued that way. You know, now I don't have to re-download the same the game. Now I don't have to go stand in line and wait. All of the stuff is already going to be on the game. Yep. All I got to do is download the update. Yep. I'm okay with that. Oh, dude, I would love that. I'm okay with that because I'm not buying the disc anymore. And then I already play the game. If I like the game and I want the update, cool. They're just adding on love to the game. That's why That's why a lot of people, um, I've actually heard a lot of people say, I don't understand why sports games don't just offer a 30 half price update dude so instead of charging me 60 dollars every year you charge me 30 dollars every dude, year i said that about my uh, mortal Kombat. i said instead of making a mortal Kombat every year, just make a just really good one the mortal Kombat, just mortal Kombat, and then every year or every so often put out the update add characters add stages do that you could do that with call of duty make a call of duty Nothing, no tag, no nothing, and then every year you just add in some maps, add in some and, guns, and you know what's funny, and that's and that's your and that's why once again, and I'm gonna end it on this. That's why we got to get into PC because mm-hmm. PC does that. Yeah, exactly. That, <laughs> We're just getting. I'm just yeah. getting into yeah. PC. Yeah, you know, Warframe. Warframe is just that example because yeah. when you play Warframe, you sit up and you play the game. They drop an update. Plays of a uh, play, uh, planes, planes of Edelon. Edelon. Now you're playing what seems like a new experience. Oh yeah, pl- you see, you watching all the reviews on them. Yeah, the new update is dope. They added fishing. They added. Th- Did you know they, they just added fishing in yeah. with this update? Yeah. 
I didn't play war. I'm thinking this. Oh, this is no, a mechanic no, in the game. No, no it's, it's not. It's new. This is new. So now, just as these new war, these Warframe players that have been playing for three, two years, it's this just new to me. We all learning together. So, yep. so yes, PC gaming. I mean, with that being said, if we're gonna have that talk, I kind of already know where I'm driven. You know, but when you when you got to think about it from that perspective as well. Have you like you got to like yo? If I'm gonna buy these map packs, dog. Yeah. Shit, you know, but that's just the way that you think about it. But what you said, don't let me me talk. No, talking. no, no, no. In a, you know, you yeah. were correct. I believe you were right. It's just you got to think about it from. We got to look at all scale. angles. It would so, be yeah. it would be wrong of us to uh, to ignore the other side. And you do vote with your dollar. You Every are time. correct. I do agree with that. I do agree with that a hundred percent. Because if we say I ain't buying this no more. They ain't gonna make it no they more. They ain't gonna make it no more. Period. So, and on that, folks, thank you. This went over just a little bit. Yeah, this was this was a cool one, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. We, you know, and I really appreciate you guys. Make sure to follow us on Twitch, on uh, Instagram. All of our all links, of, yeah, are down in the description. Below. At Baron J six seven, and I'm XT Jones on. And platform. make sure to like, subscribe. We really appreciate the support. Get in the comments. Let us know what you guys agree with, disagree with. And just we communicate back and forth. We can we can make this happen. And let us know if there's anything we can do better. And if there's any topics you guys want us to discuss, yeah, you drop those in the comics or even hit us up on our social media. And accounts. we'll and we'll and do we'll it. Throw those in our uh, our little list here of things that we want to discuss. So, all right, you folks have a good one. Really appreciate you. Peace out. Same side, like a small board on the baseline. Hater on my right, better lay low. Turn it off for safety, don't take time. Niggas supposed to worry about black lives. Niggas still doing black on black crowd. Johnny Stormflow, bring your face off. Catch your two face on the flip side. If they want war.